So Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim ahmaduhu wa usalli ala rasulil kareem amma ba'd. So today at number one, I want to give you a timeline of the fitan, meaning from now till the day of judgment, what are the different phases the Prophet has given us, okay? So I'm going to give you different templates to understand this, okay? I'm going to start with the overview and then the next hadith will be more specific and then the next hadith will be more specific and like this I'm going to narrow it down. We start with the general the Prophet gave us and then we go down to the specific that the Prophet gave us so we can actually see where we are and it's not only enough to talk about this timeline, okay, but Rather, it is also important to have the solutions. So I'm going to do both of that, inshallah ta'ala, today. And rather in a quick quick way. But in my future talks, I'm going to zoom into different parts of these aspects. And then we will be talking about them now. Number one point. What is the age of the ummah? Okay. We have to understand we have a sister ummah. The sister Ummah is the Ummah of Musa والسلام, to Isa والسلام. These two Ummahs are very, very similar. Okay, You will find over and over again this kind of like conversation that takes place over and over and over, over, and over again in the tradition of the Prophet والسلام, about the Ummah of Musa والسلام, Okay, For example, I'll give you two very simple examples. When the Prophet goes to Mi'raj, when he comes down, he meets Musa والسلام. And Musa والسلام, says to him, your ummah cannot handle it. Meaning as an ummah, they are very similar. Okay. And so then the Prophet goes back and asks Allah for permission to lighten the burden. Okay. Until it becomes five prayers. We all know this. Another example is the Prophet has a dream, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the Prophet said, I saw a big ummah, a very big ummah. And then the Prophet is told, this is the ummah of Musa والسلام. The Prophet said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, la ya'tiyannakum ma ata bani Israel hazbun na'lun bin na'al. All those things will come to your ummah that came, uh, came to, will come to your ummah, meaning will, that came to bani Israel will come to the ummah of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, right? So, uh, we know that that ummah, and the age of that ummah from Musa to Isa. Both of us end in Isa alayhi salatu wasalam. Okay? They had Dawood as their Khalifa, Suleiman as their Khalifa, they had Talut as their Khalifa, they had uh, others as their Khalifa. We had Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, Ali. Okay? Even though there's a difference of gap in terms of timing, but like the Prophet said, two shoes of a pair. It eventually turns out to be almost equal. Al-Aqsa is taken away from Bani Israel, Quds. Is taken the holy land is taken away from Bani Israel first from the Assyrians then from the Babylonians twice. Al Aqsa will be and has been you can just about taken away from us now twice too. First time was by the Crusaders and then Salahuddin Ayyubi won it back and now the second time is now in this after the state of Israel and Jerusalem being the capital and now they're annexing all the lands so now they will take Jerusalem again the second time and and then Isa alayhi will come and free. Uh, Jerusalem from the uh, from the forces of that time. Now, so what is the age of the Ummah of Bani Israel? The age of the Ummah of Bani Israel is almost 1,500 years old. The age of this Ummah is also going to be around 1,500 years old. There's a hadith of the Prophet Wasallam in which the Prophet says, Oh Allah, give my Ummah a day, a half a day more. This is in Sayyid Bukhari. Sayyid Bukhari. We're going to focus on these ahadith as time goes by. Meaning, one day with Allah is a thousand years, and then half a day more is 500 years. This is what Imam Siyuti and many of the great scholars, uh, including Dr. Isra Ahmed, uh, they had the feeling that the Ummah will last about a thousand five hundred years, give and take. Okay. Another way to look at this is the Prophet ﷺ said, In Allah yab'asu ala ra'si kulli mi'atin amin man yujadidu laha dinaha. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will raise in the beginning of every century someone who will revive Islam. So, for example, in the first, uh, there's no uh, difference of opinion about the first one, and there's no difference of opinion about the last one. The first one was Omar bin Abdul Aziz, okay? And the last one will be the Mahdi. And they will, all of these Mujaddideen have come in the beginning of the century. So, meaning we are in the middle of the 14th century, in the beginning of the 15th century will be somebody who is going to revive the deen. Now, this will become more clear as I talk more, okay? So the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Ummah of Bani Israel, which is the Ummah Allah talks to us most about, right? 
is the prophets of Bani Israel because we're most like them and we need the guidance of their mistakes and their the things that they did right and their prophets because the prophet said sallallahu alaihi wasallam the ulama of my ummah will be like the prophets of Bani Israel because the role that the prophets played in Bani Israel the ulama are supposed to play okay uh, in this ummah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam because no more prophets are coming so al ulama warithul anbiya the prophets are the inheritor, uh, the, the ulama are the inheritor of the prophets, not degree, not your degree of being a scholar, but truly, inna yaksha Allah min ibadi ulama, those who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, taqwa and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and have eyes to see, and who can be like a shepherd to the people. Now, having said that, right, the prophet said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, kitabu salah, again, say Bukhari, okay, kitabu salah, the prophet said, the the Ummah of Bani Israel was like the time of Dhuhr to Asr. And my Ummah will be like the time from Asr to Maghrib. As you know, this is the Ummah of, of uh, Salat al-Asr. Basically, it's, this, it's our most important prayer by, uh, by a large opinion of the scholars. Okay, so from Asr to Maghrib. In fact, let me share with you something interesting. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the heavens and the earth in how many days? Six days. خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ فِي سِتَّةِ أَيَّامٍ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the heavens and the earth in six days. So the seventh day is when? The seventh day is Jum'ah, which is the day of judgment. يَوْمُ الْقِيَامَةِ يَوْمْ مَالِكِ يَوْمِ الدِّينِ Master of the day of judgment. So six days. The sixth day, you can say the beginning of the sixth day was the creation of Adam. Then the Prophet said, Bani Israel is like from the time from Dhuhr to Asr. And our time will be like from Asr to Maghrib. Okay, now, uh, but you can say uh, th 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 this is almost equal time, okay, or it's a delayed maghrib, you can say. Uh, now, so the, we are in these coming towards the end of the sixth day, okay. So the Ummah's life is 1500 years, give and take, maybe 1550, right, but or maximum, maximum 1600, okay, but. Uh, some scholars are of the opinion because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Inna a'atayna kal kawthar. O Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we gave you al kawthar, meaning you have kawthar is from kathir, most. So, because of this, the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will be given and honored with more time than even Musa alayhi salatu wa sallam. So, meaning more time than uh, Dhuhr to Asr will be given between Asr and Maghrib, more people, more time, more ummah, right? And like the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I hope my people will be the most people in Jannah. Now, this is the large framework. Now, let's come down specifically. I will mention the hadith uh, narrated by Imam Ahmed bin Hanbal. The Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, okay? Takunu fikum nabuwa ma sha Allahu an takun. Prophethood will stay amongst you as long as Allah wants it to stay amongst you. Now, the Prophet mentions five phases of history. Okay, and over here I'm just going quickly because this is a whole conversation itself. Um, there will be prophethood amongst you as long as Allah wants it, then Allah will raise it. Then there will be khilafa on the footsteps of the prophethood. This is for, according to another hadith, the prophet, the khilafa would remain for 30 years, which includes Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, Ali, and Hassan, six months of. Hassan, radiyallahu anhum ajma'in. Okay, so you have the, khil the prophethood and then the khilafa ala min hajj nabuwa. Thumma takunu mulkan adhan. Then there will be kingship that will bite. And this lasted for a long time. Muslim kings, okay, starting from Yazid. Then you had the Umayyad Empire, the Abbasid Empire. You had the, the Ottoman Empire, the Mughal Empire. These were imperial Muslim imperialists, okay, and they ruled the world. But they were more or less, if you, they were criminals and they were mostly negative. There were some good kings too, okay. Like Nuruddin Zanqi, for example. Uh, a lot of people can consider Aranzeb, uh, Aranzeb to be a very good king. Salahuddin Ayyubi was a very good king, you can say. But th those are rare, okay. But those still are within a, you can say they were, you know, like a family is a natural uh, development. A family is something natural. So kingship, in, in a sense, is still according to fitrah. Meaning it's still in the, the phase of fitrah, but it's not according to the sharia. Okay? Because in the sharia, the leader has to be chosen by the 
will of the ummah wal takum minkum ummatun yaduna ila sorry wa adallahu alladhina amanu minkum wa amilu salihat la yastakhlifu innakum fil ard anyway so you have imperialism then the prophet said thumma takunu mulkan jabriyan then you will have colonialism imperialism upon you which is the phase we're going through now thumma takunu khilafa ala min hajinab then again will come a time of khilafa but this time it will be global in extent because the prophet was sent to all humanity and that mission of the prophet will only be accomplished when the the nizam and the teachings of the prophet are also global okay so this you can say the jew world order will become the just world order okay so these are the five phases the prophet gave us we are in the fourth phase okay so this now in terms of when we're looking at ashratu sa'a the uh, the uh, ilm al akhir zaman we know we're coming towards the end Okay, we're at the end of the end. Okay, now there's another hadith by Hudayfa bin uh, Hudayfa radiyallahu an. Okay, in which the he says he starts the hadith by saying, "Kun kana nasu yasluna Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam anil shar wa kuntu asalu anil khair." The people used to ask the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam about the evil things. I used to ask, sorry, the people used to ask him about the good things, right? The good things about Islam. But I kuntu asalu anil shar. I used to ask him about the evil things. مخافتي أن يدركني because out of the fear that it would overtake me. So he asked the prophet questions, right? One of the questions was, and again, you know the five phases of history. The prophet gives here four phases. Islam came, right? We uh, uh, it, well, the Sahabi he mentions we were in Jahiliyyah. Then Islam came. Then after this khair, after this good, will there be evil? And the prophet said, yes, there will be. Okay. And then the prophet then he asked, will there be any good after that evil? He said, "Yes, but it will be tainted. It's like the Ottoman, Ottoman, the Umayyad, the Basid. It will be tainted. It's not. It won't be pure. Will there be any evil after that? Yes, there will be people on the doors of the hellfire calling towards the hellfire, right? It's like they're on the doors of hellfire calling towards the hellfire. And he said, can you tell me about them? Sif hum lana ya Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Can you tell us about them? This is, by the way, in Sahih Bukhari, Kitab al Fitr. Okay." And the Prophet says, "Umin jildatuna wa alsinatina." They are from our skin, and they talk our language. They are from the Arabs, right? And so, and then the, he says, "What do you, what do you want me to do in such a situation?" And the Prophet says, "Be with the jamaah, be with the imam, and be with the jamaah." This is what the Prophet said. And he said, "If I don't find a jamaah, if I don't find an imam, the Prophet says, go, eat from the roots of the tree until hatta yudrik al mawt, until death comes upon you." So now I've given you the age of the ummah. Now I've given you the different phases of history as described by the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Now let's get into more specifics. Okay. Now I want to share with you a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that is very important. This hadith has been narrated by uh, uh, by um, by uh, the very famous uh, narrator of, uh, of of the end of times. Uh, I'm forgetting his name. Allah wasallam ala Muhammad, but I'll just mention it over here. The Prophet said, "Yuhliku fiha akthar al-nas." Most of the people will die by the fitans. This is what the Prophet said: the wars, the plagues, all these things. Most of the people will die from it, except illa man kana yarifuha qabla thalik. Except for the people that understand the age of fitan and understand the fitan, at least try to understand the fitan, they will be able to save themselves. So this is not just about knowing about the day of judgment. This is about knowing it, so we can save ourselves. Not because we want to live, not for dunya, but because we want to survive for the sake of Islam. We want to survive for the sake of the Deen of Allah. We want to survive so that maybe our children will be with Isa and with the Mahdi. Okay, this is, should be our intention. Every one of us should have this intention. The Prophet said, "Okay, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, هذه الفتن قد أضلت." Okay, these will be fitans that will overtake you like the night. Okay, Jaba al Bakr, like the like the 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 plague of the uh, of the cow. Okay, or the face of the cow. Okay, Yuhliku fiha akthar al nas. Most of the people will die. Illa man kana yarifuha qabla thalik. Noman ibn uh, Nuaim bin Hamad is his name. رضي الله عن رحمة الله عليه. Nuaim bin Hamman, the teacher of Imam Bukhari, he narrated this hadith. Okay, now, now let me tell you what is happening from here, where we are today, 
to the end of time. Okay. Now for that, I will, again, I will be focusing on many, many, many narrations of the Prophet ﷺ that are dealing with this, but I'm only giving you a gist over here so that we understand the gist. Okay. And that is this hadith narrated by Abu, Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu qala al-fitnatu rabi'a ammiya'u mudlima tamuru mawr al-bahr the, the fourth of this, remember, uh, the fourth phase. This is very al-fitnatu rabi'a. According to that hadith, remember I said there are five phases. Prophethood, khilafa, imperialism of the Muslims, and then colonialism, imperial, forced imperialism on the Muslims. And the Prophet says the fourth fitna Okay, umya'u mudlima will be like a dark night. Why? What happens in the darkness? You can't move. You're in a lockdown. You're in a bad situation, right? You don't know what's right. You don't know what's wrong. It's all confusing. This this phase of Laylatul Mudlima, which is in many many ahadiths of the Prophet sallallahu right? After Laylatul Mudlima is the phase of Malhama. So get this. I want this to be clear. Okay, that. Allah knows best, but it seems clear from the text, and Allah knows best, meaning this is not hisharatun nas. This is not an indirect, uh, uh, you take something out of the text. No, this is ibaratun nas. From the, from the actual wordings of the text, that after this phase of Laylatul Muslima, from the dark, from the age of the dark night, right, which would come under that phase of, uh, Mulkan uh, Jabriyan, where you have forced imperialism of uh, of the non-Muslims over the Muslims. In that, there is a phase, okay, that is Laylatul Mudlima, and then in that is another phase called the Malhama, okay. Then after that comes the Mahdi and the rise of Islam in the final uh, uh, Khilafa, okay. And so the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he called it in Hadith after Hadith Laylatul Muslima. Now, what will be some of the qualities of that time? It will be one fitan after another fitan that will force people into their homes. Whether it is the coronavirus, whether it is the riots, whether it is whatever will come after that, it will force us back into our homes. It will force an, us into a dire situation and it will be one after the other. You also find a hishara of this, okay, and the text of this in Surah Al-Kahf. Allah says, وَتَرَكْنَا بَعْدَهُمْ يَوْمَ إِذِينَ On that day, okay, we will leave them. Yamuju fi ba'd. It will be like one wave after another wave. And what is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talking about could be clarified over here. Uh, he says, Tamuru mawr al bahar. Like one wave after the other wave in a sea. You know, have you ever seen the seashore on the beach? The wave comes in. Sometimes it's a high tide. Sometimes it's not so high. Sometimes it's a very soft. But it'll be one wave after another wave after another wave. We, that that wave has now begun, okay? And the Prophet, No house of the Arab or the Ajam will remain, except it'll have this problem in it, right? And the Prophet says, uh, uh, And these problems will be caused by people's legs and hands. Like whether it's coronavirus, it's by washing, not washing the hands and you're going one place to the next place. Or whether it is the riots, you're going from one place to the other place and breaking things with your hands, right? Uh, the, the, the crimes that are committed with your hands and feet, okay? And then, It'll be as if they're trapped, right? And then, uh, And, uh, and, and difficulties will increase. From one level to another level to another level. Until the good will no longer be looking like the bad. People will, they have no choice from their perspective, but to do the bad things to survive. And people will accept the wrong things. No one will be able to say anything, okay, is what it means. No one will know it except it, it, it comes from one place and then it, you're trying to put a stop to it and then it comes out from another place. And this will keep happening. Okay? Now, uh, and, and people will lose their Islam. Okay? In this, in this, uh, phase of Laylatul Muslima, okay, people will lose their Islam. Okay? And, uh, so the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and I'll just narrate this, 
there will be a fitna in which one sleeping will be better than the reclining one. The one reclining will be better than the sitting. The sitting one will be better than the standing. The standing will be better than the walking. The walking will be better than the running. And I said, O Messenger of Allah, would the Prophet's talking about which phase? Laylatul Mudlimah. That time that where there will be like, you're, it's like a dark night. It's like you're locked at home, right? For because of fear, okay, because of coronavirus, because of riots, because of whatever comes after that, it could be wars, could be could be a bunch of things, but it'll be one after another and another and another and another, and you will be forced to be more and more at home. And if you're going out, it's more and more people are going to be going outside or doing activities, not for good reasons, but for bad reasons. More and more that is going to happen, okay? So, over here, I just want to mention very quickly the timeline that we're in, okay? Laylatul Mudlima will be followed by, and there's the explicit text, which I'm not going to go over today, but I'm only mentioning part of it, that after this Laylatul Mudlima is when the wars will start. The big wars, the Malhama will start at the end, right? And so, this period, this time period, where, again, I'll give you another uh, few things to consider, where Jerusalem will now begin to rise. Do you know how many people from America, how many Jews are now beginning to go back? How many Jews? Look it up. Jews applying to go back and live in Israel after coronavirus. Okay, it's happening. Okay, and uh, so uh, anyway, the point I'm trying to make, inshallah, is that uh, we are in the phase of Laylatul Muhlima. So what do we do? We got about, according to one hadith, we have 12 years. This Laylatul Muhlima period will last for 12 years. In this period of 12 years, you have to do the following. Number one, we have to take the knowledge of the deen from the internet because it will not exist forever. Okay? From the internet and put it back into some format or you get a solar powered computer or something because it's going to be lost. Okay? Somebody would do a great deed if somebody in every city of the Muslim world gets a solar powered laptop, for example, and downloads all the important YouTube's videos and just keeps it there and you know it's there and it can be you can use light in the sun and you can watch the videos and learn that way allahu alam but even better than that is maybe alama bil qalam is that you put it down in the form of a pen okay and allah knows best number 1 is preserving the deen okay number 2 you have to be part of a jama you have to have an emir okay it doesn't matter where but you have to okay you have to have an emir you have to have a jama you have to have a plan if there's a jama'ah, there has to be a plan. What is the plan? You've got 10 years. You've got 10 years to plan it out. You have to learn fishing. You have to learn how to cultivate the land. You have to learn how to do hunting. You have to learn how to survive on a mountain. You have to learn martial arts. You have to learn about security. You have to learn how to, uh, to, to protect your family and your people. Okay? You have to have a jama'ah. And... You have to understand how it, the dynamics of a jama'ah work. This is the time for Muslims to become mature. We don't have that much time. Because once the wars star, start, the Prophet said, and this will end, okay? The Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi there will be a big bang, okay, called the Had. okay? Some people are interpreting it, some Muslims are interpreting it to mean an asteroid from outside will come and hit the earth. Other scholars are ta taking it as a nuclear attack, okay? This uh, nuclear attack or this had, okay, uh, which is mentioned indirectly in the Khan, okay, but I'm not going to go into that. There's a special prayer you have to know about that time. Now, when the had happens, when this boom happens, the Prophet said, and I'll, I'll be talking about these ahadiths, but the Prophet said, you have to have one year of food because for one year, whatever. Because the sunlight is blocked because of the nuclear weapon or because of the dust on top. Whatever happens, some big sound that everybody in the world hears and everyone thinks that my, our neighbors have been just completely destroyed from this big sound that will happen on earth, right? And, uh, and, and according to some of the scholars or some of the narrations, it seems like it might be an asteroid that will hit the, 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 uh, the Atlantic Ocean, I think it is. And then, you know, it'll cause ripples and so on and so forth. And this whole system will fall down. And then we will all be back to places where there's no YouTube videos. There's nothing. 
and then we're all and then from there the Mahdi will start and fighting but we have to learn horse riding we have to learn how to shoot with the bows and the arrows and I will be doing this but I you know the thing is is that I can only do so much I have put so much energy into what I'm already doing and then to increase that to educate us about fishing and 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 camping and 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 fighting and martial arts I want to do all of that but I'm trying to think what is the best way to do that if anyone has suggestion you know I, I'd like to I'm thought about holding classes you know having Arabic classes and help having like you know bow and arrow classes and like what do I do what is the best way to do this because I'm also thinking about me and our Jama'a over here my family uh, and 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 the Jama'a that we have and and so many things are happening in the process that you know if I want to talk about uh, some of these issues I can't because the riots are going on and I want to talk about that too because you have to address the issues that are before us so Allahu A'lam what is the best way to deal with all these things but uh, and I have you know I have my own weaknesses I have my own uh, lack of ability of doing things right and so uh, Allahu A'lam how things will go but we don't have a lot of time and it is and what I'm pushing for is everyone everyone learn 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 this is the time to get discipline 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 if there's no discipline there's no stability if there's no stability there's no protecting the the, the deen of allah forget about us there's no protecting islam if there's no stability if you want to protect protect uh you know what allah says for Zulqarnayn? you know what allah says for yusuf stability is the most important thing for being mature having a mature jama'ah you gotta have stability so uh i will end here inshallah ta'ala for today i think uh i said a lot of what i wanted to say and so this is the timeline of the age of the the age of the fitans okay the timeline of the ummah and then laylatul mudlima followed by malhama followed by khilafa alam the rise of islam after that Okay, but we have to survive this time and we have to not go to Mahdi as individuals. We need to survive so that we go and we're able to send people to the Mahdi in groups, in jamaas, in entire groups that need to support him. Okay, and so, uh, and, and so I'll end here.